Hi, it's Dr. Rowe here. I was just downstairs and I thought I'd finish my filming. <laughs> I couldn't resist this. So I've just been talking to somebody downstairs, one of the builders, and he said to me, so what's your view on DIY landlords? I said, actually, that's a question that came in recently, is how do I know from a DIY landlord? So I'm going to tackle this one. It's not a long one, this. You're watching it and you're either getting into buy to let and you're thinking, okay, what do I need to be aware of? Or if you're currently a landlord right now and you don't know if you're a DIY landlord, let me talk to you about DIY landlords. So DIY landlords are basically people that want to do everything themselves, meaning this. Okay, so let me give you a bit of a checklist. We'll put it, we'll put it on the left-hand side here. I'll do this as a video where uh, this is going to be a list down the left-hand side. So how do I know from a DIY landlord? Number one, you don't really need to take any guidance or help from anyone else. In fact, if you're watching this right now and you're a DIY landlord, you're probably going to press the pause button or skip to another video. I don't want to hear this bald-headed guy telling me if I'm a DIY landlord or not. So DIY landlords, number one, is they don't take advice or guidance from other people. I can do it myself. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I can do it myself. I don't need any help from anybody else. It's this kind of person. What's up, Dr. Rowe? Yeah, I don't need your support or guidance, man. I don't need anyone telling me what to do. I'm going to do this myself. I can look after everything. I'm going to run the property, clean the toilets, clean the roof, sweep up everywhere, stick a broom up my backside. I'm just going to sweep and do everything. I don't need anybody else, right? DIY landlords. Don't take guidance, don't take advice from people. Generally don't have a coach, won't have a mentor, probably won't watch videos like this. And even if they did, they'd probably go, yeah, that's just BS, not interested in reading this stuff. I can do it myself. A good book to read on this subject would be a book called The E-Myth Revisited by Michael Gerber. I read that book, oh my gosh, 15 to 20 years ago now, probably close to 20 years ago. Fantastic read. It's all about the mindset of somebody starting off, launching and developing a business at the beginning and trying to take control of absolutely everything and cannot grow the business because they're wrapping their arms around the business and they just can't grow. They're trying to be the market person, the technical person, the accounts person, the PR person. They're trying to do it. Doesn't work. No, no, no. Okay, so that's number one. That's how, that's my first tip about warnings about being a DIY land. The second thing is this. DIY landlords typically want to run the project. So if the project's being renovated and they want to actually be involved with it, they will go there and they will take over everything. So the problem with that, of course, is if you're in a job and you're not fully financially independent yet, and you've got three or four of these going on over the space of a year, all of a sudden as a landlord, you're actually getting busier and busier, taking yourself away from your kids, from your family, from your partner, your husband and your wife, and you're saying, I'm doing this for us, honey. But actually, what you do, you're on site, checking the bill, checking everything, running all the project yourself, Yes, first project, second project, we did that. I would say it would certainly be useful to do because it gets you familiar with the process of how a property is renovated and how you get it ready for being let out as a buy to let landlord. But to keep doing it, you're basically building yourself a job here. And you know, I've been down this road and I can tell you it is very time consuming and your phone is never off. You know, my phone is right now, it's somewhere around here. But this is going to keep ringing. It's going to keep ringing. So you'll be like this. Um, yeah, okay, honey, yeah. Yeah, I'll be with you in a minute. Hold on, let me just check something. Um, yeah, that skirting board needs to be put. And I think the tenants are going to really like the room later. Yeah, hold on, just one second. Before you know it, <laughs> you've got no, there will be no honey. Uh, honey being he or she, whoever it is. So DIY landlords typically will own, and so this is the challenge, right? You're only going to do it your way. And what the Landlord Association said a couple of years ago in the United Kingdom was about 75% of landlords in the UK classified as amateur landlords. That's a small number. And uh, like a small number of professionals, a large number of amateurs. When I was in Australia, for example, recently, uh, I can't remember the exact figure, but I think only 1% of all landlords uh, own more than six properties. Uh, I think it's 1% own more than five properties. So there's a tiny percentage that uh, own just one or two properties. But even then, they're managing the properties themselves. They're looking to do everything. And I met people that were stressed, that were dealing with day-to-day -day stuff that they shouldn't be doing. So a DIY landlord will say, I don't want to pay a 10% management fee to a letting agent. I'm going to do it myself. And it's 700 pound a month rent, and I want to save myself 70 pound. And my feeling is this, by the time you've spent 
three or four phone calls, gone to the house, dealt with some issues. The time you could have spent there would be well worth the £70 for somebody else to do it for you. And remember, if you're really a really professional investor, your objective isn't to run every single property, but actually it's to go out and find new deals, to raise more money, to start to develop the business as opposed to just managing the business. Hopefully that makes sense. I know this because I tried that at the beginning. That's the second thing. The third thing is that a DIY landlord um, will generally, as a rule, want to try and do all the contracts themselves, or the legal paperwork themselves, and come up with ideas for how they want the contracts to be. Dangerous. There's so much legislation happening at the moment. Uh, you know, there's selected licensing kicking around the UK, and it has been for some time now. And if you don't know these subtle things, and you're not aware of it, you're in major trouble. Remember, as a, as a landlord taking over the property, if you're not using a letting agent, you just have to do all that yourself. You've got credit searches to do, uh, you've certainly got paperwork to do in terms of the legal contracts to make sure that you've got the checks on the electricity, your gas, utilities, all of those things. There's a lot of responsibilities and checks that have to take place. If you're doing that on every single turn that moves into your property or properties, especially if you start thinking about HMOs, you're a busy person. And that's really why you're paying other people to do this for you. So what I'm trying to say is that the more you decide to take on and do it yourself, you're moving out of one job and into another job. And it might be you say, well, actually, that's what I want to do, Doctor. I want to do that. I want to run my own letting agent. Ah, well, that's different. Okay, it's one thing is being a landlord that owns property and manages them all themselves, trying to fit it all in, versus, oh, hold on a minute. I've got a good friend of mine that lives probably about an hour from here. He has so many properties that he, he set up his own letting agent whereby he manages his own properties, has staff in there, but he also manages for other people as well. That's a whole different model altogether. He's running his business. You try and do everything yourself, it's not going to work. So, so just be aware of this. DIY landlords are going to be very much consuming time and stress. Remember, you're at home, you're just sat relaxing like this. You've got your arm around your beautiful husband or your wife, and your kids here, and then... Phone starts when you kind of look down. Excuse me, honey. Excuse me, kids. Uh, Oh, really? There's a leak in the toilet. Okay. Uh, yeah, let me just see if I can uh, get Bob the Builder. Hold on a second. I'm just going to be back in a minute. Off you go. Call the Bob the Builder. Bob the Builder's not available. The tenant's is leaking. You're 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes from the property. Off you go. Yeah, it's just not worth it. So you've got to make a decision what type of landlord you want to be. Do you want to be hands on or hands off if you want to be hands on? How far hands on are you going to be with that? So DIY landlords, typically, my experience is that they, it takes up a lot of their time. And, and the fourth thing I guess I want to say is this. I've taught a lot of people in property investing over the years, and there's so many things to learn. Please, if you're watching this and think I'm going to go do this on my own, get yourself educated, get yourself a mentor, pay for that. A mentor pay themselves back 10 times over. When you invest in a mentor, I think for us it was like 20 odd thousand pounds, 20, 25 thousand pounds for an education program. A lot of people at the time were like, ah! Really? But actually, what was really interesting is we paid for that very quickly back through the first couple of deals. But please, take the time to have somebody guide you on this, because the other big factor here is if you're a landlord and you're trying to do everything yourself, you literally will get to a point, and I've seen this with so many landlords over the years that have come through trainings that I've done, for example, and they go, yeah, I've got to like four or five, six properties, and it's been flat for the last five, seven, eight, nine years. And I was like, okay, back up a minute. So you bought one, two, three, four, five. Great, well done, that's great. They say, yeah, you don't understand, Dr. Rowe. And you kind of flattened off and said, okay, well, what do you think happened? Well, I don't know, you know, we're managing the properties and took a lot of time dealing with the tenants, etc. I guess I lost my motivation for buying more properties. Aha! Okay, so there's two things here. There's the psychology of thinking, crikey, if I buy another five, how am I going to be able to do this and maintain this and keep a civilized lifestyle? And secondly, there's the motivation element of, I don't know if I want to own more properties because it seems like a lot of hard work. So a lot of people that I've met who have been DIY landlords have done all right with three or four or five properties, meaning they got started and yes, they've got some cash flow coming in. What they haven't done right is they haven't their personal lives. It's taken up a lot more time, but the business hasn't grown. Whereas if you can release some of those properties away from you and somebody else is managing it for you, <laughs> wow, that five, six, seven, eight hours that I spent this week looking after the portfolio, whatever it was, I think I'll do that somewhere else. I've got to build more properties into the portfolio. I can buy more properties and actually start to create more wealth. And that's where the benefit comes in. So from my perspective, the properties I've got all around the country, I don't need to see them. I get phone calls through my PA if there's something major. You'll have WhatsApp messages. It's all managed more remotely because you've got a filter between you 
and the properties. Hopefully this is making sense. So, these are my tips about DIY landlords and things to be aware of. If you find yourself in that space, you might want to check in and look in the mirror and say, no. okay, based on what people are saying, maybe I need to change my strategy, maybe I need to step back a little bit in order for my business to grow. And that's all about then working with the right people, getting the right knowledge and experience to scale your business up to another level. Dr. Rose signing out. I better get back downstairs again. Come and join me in another top tips from Dr. Rowe. And I shall see you on the next video.